that will that never, never work. work. You can't, can't fuck with us. Seriously? Don't. 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 Oh my god, that's bad. You probably should, should find a hobby. You ever learn to sell? Stop. Be happy. Well, you don't. Don't bother me. I've seen better people. Do you really want to do And my third grade, get it up. Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. You're actually enjoying this show. Ninth episode, next time it'll be double digits already. Kind of what happens when you do weekly uh, episodic podcasting, I guess. It just, I'm, you know, as an audio drama guy that releases 10 episodes every few months, this is kind of weird for me. I'm still feeling my way out on this. So, uh, update on word count. I am still not writing. Again, it's killing me. I am still editing. And if you've listened to the previous episodes of this show, you know how much I hate it. In a perfect world, when I hit the Powerball or the Mega Millions, and for those of you overseas, those are monstrous, monstrously immense lotteries that we have. I know uh, when I lived in Germany, their lotteries are very limited, and I'm a huge uh, English soccer fan, so I'm, and I have English. Well, British friends across the aisle. God, I got to get to that place someday. Anyways, um, but anyways, enough of them to know a little bit about their culture to the fact that they have limited, restricted lotteries. Nothing like what we have here. I went to the grocery store the other day. The Powerball was worth $300 million and the Mega Millions was $260 million, I believe. And for a fleeting second, I entertained the idea of winning both of those and being worth a half a billion dollars overnight. That world, <laughs> in that world, all I'm doing besides finding a mountain retreat to buy so I can completely Robinson Crusoe the rest of my life and never see another human being again is uh, to uh, write, 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 and then just kind of hire out editors because I hate it. Ah, God, I hate editing with a passion. I'm still editing Who Killed Julie? Of course, those of you who have been around before know that because I respect and demand respect for my writing time, that I have scheduled recording days and I knock out two episodes at a time. So, you know, to break down the fourth wall a little bit and, and show the man behind the curtains, I'm recording episode nine after a short orange juice break from episode eight. It's just the way it's got to be. Um, but I still want to do this and I still want to have these conversations with you and I still want to get the emails and the feedback that I'm getting from the early episodes of the show. It's kind of encouraging. It's, I'm not even going to lie. I will not lie. It's very encouraging. So I'm still having fun doing it, so I'll do it. And I'm going to keep documenting my journey towards publication. That's what this is about because I can do it. I suck. I'm a horrible writer and I'm still going to get my ass published. What about you? What, what is your writing goal? Some of you, I know for a fact, are audio dramatists because I run in those circles most of my time. And I know a lot of you aren't interested in writing a novel. I'm still talking to you. Your, your, your being published might be getting that audio drama out that you've been, that's been in your brain ever since you knew that fictional podcasting was a thing. Not fictional podcasting, fiction podcasting. Because if it's fictional podcasting, that means you're, it's not real podcasting. <laughs> you get my point. Before I have this uh, circular inner, inner dialogue externally. So whatever your go writing goal is, my you know when I say I'm encouraging you toward getting published, please know I understand all of us are different. You know whether that's getting that audio drama series going even getting it published, publishing the 10th series of it, putting together a book of 
your own short stories, finishing a short story, writing a poem, getting that screenplay done so you can send it off to someone. Whatever your goal is, you're going to do it. You're going to suck less each and every day you work on it, and you will get that goal. Why? Because I'm talking to the people who are passionate and serious. If you've got the passion and you have the discipline and the dedication, you're going to get there. The only thing that is going to stop you is you. Don't. Now, what just happened in that silence? What's happening in this silence? When I said that, what did you do? How did you react? Because that's the only thing that's going to stop you. If you made an excuse in that silence, I'm going to call you to the carpet. That's a military term. I don't know if you civilians use that or not. Being called to the carpet means that, you know, you're kind of in trouble with the boss and you've got to go stand tall in front of them. That means at attention. That means you're getting your ass reamed out verbally. You're in trouble. So I would call you to the carpet if, if you filled that silence in with an excuse. I'd be coach. I'd take a coaching approach first and, and encourage you and, and highlight your strengths. And then we're going to go reattack. And if you come back with another excuse, then you're getting yelled at <laughs> because you can. The only thing, and it's 2017. It would take an extreme set of, an extreme example for someone to convince me that you can't be that person. If you've got the dedication and the drive and the passion, you're not going to convince me that you cannot reach that writing goal because of, you know, it's you. If you don't get it, it's you. Even if your writing sucks, even if your writing is horrible, like mine, you're still going to get there because you've got the dedication, the drive, and the passion to improve every single day. And that's not a platitude. Not at all. We're going to talk about that stuff in some episode. So today, episode nine, I want to start talking about thinking. I talked about that in episode eight a little bit when we talked about the closet of inspiration, people not envying us as creators, because how do you come up with all these stories? And oh, it must be so cool to be able to do this. And They don't understand that the place that we draw that inspiration, those ideas from, is the same place where we personally tuck away our demons because it's those demons that we draw on to create vivid story, vivid storytelling, the brave storytelling that I want to consume. So we talked about thinking a little bit. I want to really hit on it in this episode. I noticed something the other day. The other day, I live in Washington State, a little south of Seattle. This time of year, eh, it's a little, it's way too hot for me. But I mean, we got into the 90s for three days in a row now, and that's driving me nuts. Up until the end of July, we hadn't gotten over 85. It was nice. Most of that time, we were in the 70s in the summer. Beautiful. Anyways, so it's absolutely gorgeous in this part of the world this time of year. Blue skies, green, mountains, volcanoes. It's, it's a gorgeous place to be. In my neighborhood, when I walk a certain route, and I've got dogs that I absolutely adore, I'm walking the dogs. It's during the day. I need a break from the office, so I get out and I stretch and I and I physically, I you know, I get the vitamin D and I get the the blood flowing a little bit. So I get away and I take the dogs on a walk, and it's about a forty minute walk, and I come up past this school that we've got at the top of the hill, back into the residential area, back down the hill towards where our house is. And on this particular road, I have an absolutely unobstructed view of Mount Rainier. If you don't know what Mount Rainier is, Google it. You can see what I'm talking about. That monstrosity I can see from our neighborhood. It's 60 miles away, roughly, but I can still see it very clearly. Obviously, when you see a picture of it, you'll know because it's a massive volcano, but dormant volcano, but I can see it and it was beautiful. And it was just, you you could see the range approaching the mountain range, approaching Rainier from both sides. And it was very transcendent, very spiritual moment for me because it, it elevates me above the mundane reality of my daily life of teaching and that's what I do for you know so I can eat and pay a mortgage as I teach this this writing thing pipe dream bucket list I'm still gonna do it though right and then maybe make a 
maybe be able to go out for chicken wings with my wife at some point. But in that instant, I re- I had an epiphany that inspired this episode. I've got the dogs in one hand, two dogs, two leashes, because I'm too cheap to go buy one of those combined leash things where they've got multiple branches off of one leash. I'm not going to buy that until these leashes, leashes rip because I'm, you know, fiscally responsible. You know, I'm cheap is what I'm saying. But I noticed in, in that instant, I noticed something. I'm out on an absolutely gorgeous day. It was probably 70 degrees, 75 degrees that day in the summer. I'm in a t-shirt. There's no humidity. I mean, it is the perfect weather. I'm not sweating, but I still have the sun and I still have this beautiful open blue sky. And then this dormant volcano that is 80% still covered in snow at the end of July. And there isn't, and I'm, and I'm still on the clock at work, but I have the flexibility in my job to just get up, walk away and go walk my neighborhood. People would kill for that opportunity. And I have that. And All I could focus on was how stressed I was. All I could focus on was the fact that my mouth was tight, that my throat was like exhausted tight because that's where I carry my stress. Not because of my job. I mean, it's part of it, right? Jobs are demanding, but I I enjoy my job. If I had to do anything, this would be the thing I had to do. What I want to do is write for a living, but I'll do this until I can get to that point. But I was stressed because I had those two wonderful dogs in my hand that I wasn't paying any attention to. And I had just noticed Rainier pop up on the horizon because I was staring at my damn phone. Now, I wasn't just idly surfing through social media. I don't do that. I don't have the time to do that. I try to do it on Facebook personally a little bit just to stay connected with real people in my life, people that I care about. So I'll scroll through real quick, but most of the stuff I even do on there, I have to do for either audio drama, podcasting or writing. And I, it's not that I don't enjoy it, but it's, it's not, it's not brain dead time. It's not a time to uncheck. It's, it's business time. I'm getting work done. And that's the majority of my online time is work, 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 work with sprinklings of social conversations in between. And I really enjoy those but they distract from the writing time. 1090 rule, remember that. Paul's 1090 rule. 10% of your time in community, 90% of time in your writing. You want to get published, you want to get there, you got to make sacrifices. This is not a child's game. This is not for anybody to do. It's only for the dedicated, the disciplined, and the passionate. I truly believe that. Those are the people that are going to make it. Those are the people who are going to get self-published. Those are the people who are going to get traditionally published. Get that screenplay done and through to somebody. Get that book of poems done. Get that audio drama script written and produced and, and acted out and written and produced. You know, all of those things that go into that. Those are the people who are going to. So the 1090 rule. I was working. I had been working all morning on my real job. I had neglected all of my dream stuff, my writing stuff. Because, you know, kind of have to do your job or you get fired. I needed to stretch because I sit at a desk from 5, 10 in the morning, usually all day without a break. Sometimes I'll get up and go lay on the floor and do some sit-ups. But it's, I know, I know, it's very unhealthy. I agree. This one day I took the luxury of getting out, taking a walk. And what did I do? Instead of just going out and enjoying a beautiful day with my two wonderful loving dogs, I brought my phone with me and I caught up on all that social media business that I had to do. And then while I was doing that, I had to check in with the Audio Drama Production Podcast Facebook page. So if you're into audio drama and don't know what you're doing, definitely check them out. Uh, they're, Robert and Matthew started it and it's been handed off to two wonderful ladies, Sarah and Fiona now. Um, but it's a wealth of, of, of information and sharing. But I had to check in there on a couple of things. And then a conversation led me into a story idea. And I have a little S Note app on my Android phone that I use to scribble down ideas because I can use the stylus 
to to write it. I can text it out, or I can even you know activate my speech to text on my microphone, on my phone to jot down these ideas real quick. But I had a story idea and I had to capture in that moment or it was gone. Here I am needing to re- mentally refresh, de-stress, and I spent 38 minutes of a 40-minute walk working. Different type of work, but still working. And I realized I'm exhausting myself. I'm wearing myself out. I have gotten, because of my passion, because of my drive, because of my dedication to reaching this bucket list goal of being published before I kick the bucket. That's a, an American colloquialism that I don't know translates to everyone, but it means to die. Before I, that happens, I want to be published. And I'm so focused on that that I have now started stopping, allowing myself to have brain dead time. When I should be. When I'm trying to break that cycle of of mind-numbing stress from a job that I can do in my sleep that isn't personally fulfilling, I should have gotten out into the beautiful day with those two wonderful creatures and enjoyed myself. And instead, I worked because I had these tasks that had to get done. No, they didn't. If, If I write good stuff and I work with great people who can voice act and produce it, people are going to listen. It doesn't matter if I get on Twitter or not. They'll find it, and they'll listen. My book is not going to show up on Amazon if I'm not sitting down writing it. I can't sit down and write it and be fresh and be energized and, and give everything of myself into that writing if I'm if I've jaded myself, if I've exhausted that energy. So in order to do that, I have to take breaks. All of us have to take breaks. That nonstop thinking, constant, that's what I do. That nonstop thinking from work, or, or, I'm sorry, from writing straight into work all day long into writing whenever I can take a potty break or a very rare lunch break, which I never take, to back to work, and then, you know, by 5 o'clock in the evening, it's scrambling to get dinner together and maybe have some family time, and then you do the process all over again. I don't have that brain-dead time. And, and I had this epiphany while I was doing it. And as a creative, you need to recharge that creative well. You can't keep drawing from it. At some point, it's going to come up with dust. You're not drawing any more creative ink out of it. You're just now getting flakes of dust because you've exhausted it. Don't let yourself get to that point. An example of how, as I was thinking about this, that metacognition again, thinking about how I think and challenging some of my assumptions, peeling back the layers and and looking deeper for root cause analysis, I feel like I'm teaching again. (laughs) Um, I realized between Diary of a Madman into Subject Found, into Who Killed Julie, and into a story idea, a short story idea I had, I was using the same scene tactic and construct in four different things. Ding, ding, ding. This is my horrible writing for this section. So I'm not going to actually read you anything again this episode um, because I wanted to talk to this. I used the same scene construct. Same thing. Female protagonist slash victim, male antagonist slash villain. Same type of scene build. Same type of uh, approach. Same, almost same arc. There were variances, but it was essentially the same arc across four things. Inexcusable. That's horrible writing because that's lazy. You know why it was lazy? Because I needed to put those protagonists in a position to to progress the story. It just happened that the four variations were female versus male. And I when when I had this epiphany and I started looking at my stuff, I thought, oh my God, 
you've your your well is now officially run has officially run dry. You're now pulling up you know little flakes instead of any creative ink. Congratulations, dummy. You've worn yourself out. So I've made sure that I've stopped doing that. I, uh, you know, just little tactics like these walks. I, I take them every day now versus when I can get around to it. And when I go, I leave my phone at home. You know, something like something as easy as that. When I go work out at the gym, because I'm a dork, I do bring my Kindle and I read in between lifting weights or on the treadmill. But it's fun stuff. You know, the things that I never get to read. All these published writers tell you you've got to read 30, 40, 50, 100 books a year. How? How the hell do you read that much if you're creating? I know I sure as hell don't. I get, I get like an hour at night maybe before I fall asleep because I had this thing called life and a job that gets in the way. And I want to create myself. I want to create stories myself. So I, I realized I've got to stop effing thinking. That's the title of this episode for a very specific reason. So I want to challenge all of you. Don't be like Paul. When you get a chance to unwind and, and recharge, well, let, let me rephrase that. Do you? Do you give yourself a chance to unwind and recharge? Or are you constantly on the go? Because you've got all these things going on, and then you've got this thing on the side, this writing thing that you want to do very, very badly. You want to achieve this thing. It's important to you. Good. Recognize that. But also recognize how important it is to keep yourself fresh. You've got personal obligations. You've got demands that get, that yard has got to be mowed still. You got to clean that thing. And then in your spare time, while you're cooking or while something's on in the background on the TV, you've got social media in your face so you can see what your friends are up to. God, man, when do you ever get a break? When? So I want you to assess when you get to breathe. I want to see a list of five things, five ways you recharge, and I'm going to share them on air. I, I'm serious about that. I want to see five things that you do to recharge, and I want to share them on air. I want to show through examples from other people to a wider community what we can do for each other to recharge. Some people are so exhausted that they don't even spend any time thinking in that, and that's unfortunate, but it's understandable. So let's help them. If, if we don't help each other, who the hell is going to help us? Remember, we're just doing that writing thing. And you know what? Even if you aren't comfortable or confident sharing those things, make the list for yourself. Keep it private, but make the list for yourself. And then think about it. How easy was it for you to come up with that? Was it a struggle? Or did you whip them out? Are they true? Are they effective? Are they ineffective? Was it just a paper exercise for you? Do that for yourself. Take yourself that seriously. Take your craft that seriously. Take your time to invest in you because then you're fresh, your stories are fresh, and then we all win. Those of us who love your genre or, or, or poetry or, or are going to see your, your screenplay in film version, we, you enrich our lives. So let's, be, uh, let's pay it forward now and encourage you to take care of yourself. Make sure you give yourself that mental space. Give that creative well a chance to recharge and refill. It will run out if you don't. And I don't want that for any of you. All right. So I'm going to get off my soapbox now. You know why? Because I have to get back to work. And I have to get that done so I don't stress. So that maybe this weekend... I can feel creatively fresh again, and I can finish. <laughs> My goal is uh, by the end of this weekend to have completely finished editing Who Killed Julie for the last time, knock on wood, and I want to finish the last 70 pages of first-round edits in my, hopefully, forthcoming novel. That's my goal for the weekend. 
Somebody hold me to it and check in on me to see how well I did. All right. Go take care of yourselves. Keep being epic. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sating, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsating.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less.